Okay, I am Annie Morgan Suganami. I like to keep the Morgan in there because I'm married to a Japanese, Adwin Sharagamrag, Adwin Gamrais Seedan Sharagamrag. Um, so I'm Welsh, I speak Welsh, and I like the onomatopoeia of Annie Morgan Suganami. It's nice, isn't it? So a long way around to get to this name, my handle. Um, been a musician most of my life, and when I was 58, I was in a show with the dancer Kai Thomas, and it was a very well-funded Arts Council of Wales show. Thank you, Arts Council of Wales, yet again. And Hidemi, my husband, said, we were in Croydon, actually, at the time, gone to meet his son, who was at Brit School, and we were in the hotel uh, in the bar having a cup of coffee or something in the afternoon, and Hidemi said, don't teach anymore, don't do any private teaching, just live your life now, and the show's got to be good. Um, and this was about February, March. Show's got to be good. So I think it's time for you just to do what you want to do in your life. We'll manage and the money will be all right and I'm earning. And so I stood there and I thought, oh, I'm going to cry. This is, <laughs> you know, 45 years of, oh, can you teach my daughter, please, the flute, you know, you know, associated board exams and various other things you do. Um, and that's how I came slowly, but eventually rather quickly to art. So... I went home on the train and I'd said to her, Damie, well, well, I'll teach everybody for a month and sort of like wind them down. And then, of course, by the time I got home, I thought, the little voice was saying, Annie, you never have to teach another child the flute or, you know, don't have to do this anymore. And I thought, well, just stop it now. Time has come, just do it now. And I rang everybody and they were absolutely splendid, all my students, they were brilliant. And so then the next morning, you know, 24 hours later or 36 hours later, I woke up thinking, right, so I've got the show, but I'm not starting rehearsals with Kai in London for about six weeks, so I'm going to do my art then. I'm going to do that, and I'm going to really pursue it. And I took, I um, called to Amani, my stepson was at home, said, have you got any uh, crayons, Amani? Got anything? Have you got any? Yeah, and he said, found me a little box of crayons he had when he was a kid, you know, sharpened up a few. I thought, what am I going to do? Um, I'll, I'll do like a self-portrait then so how do I so first of all I did a pencil thing of imagining me like the multi me's and it was my first image the me's in my life going in a sort of a circle I thought I remember thinking it's quite hard actually like how do I represent this a bit tricky isn't it Annie it's a bit, oh okay well I'll do a little drawing of me sort of playing the flute oh, plumbing flute all right so I did that so oh, just, oh, God, flute oh, I don't like those arms up oh, so, and then I thought Marnie give me the crayons and I got a mirror, I thought, right, here we go. So I started drawing, I thought, oh God, I can't see, because <laughs> I can't without my reading specs. And you've got this distance problem. So in about, you know, 45 minutes, I'd eventually, I sort of had visited an avalanche of um, visual art problematics, especially for the, you know, the fading uh, eyesight. So I thought, right, well, never mind. Um, okay, let's um, do it without my specs on, right? So I tried it without, and I think, oh, God, this is really hard, and you can't see what the hell's going down, but you can sort of see if... That, then I, so I did one, took it downstairs with Damie, and I made a little frame. I thought, be an artist. Come on, right, you're in this place. This is all you are now, right? Um, so I found a cardboard box, and somebody had given me a little gift. Thank you, Mrs. Sugnami, for, you know, Annie, for all my lessons. So I cut around the edges, and I made a little frame, right, and I took it downstairs, and I held it by my head. I still have this photograph, right? Me and this... I've got a bit of crayon here, and I got a scarf, and that was a very artistic loop, and not a lot happening here, do you know what I mean? So um, I took it down, and I said to Demi, take a photograph, let's witness this moment. So I thought, then I rang my daughter, who's a very fine painter, and I said, Seren, how the heck do I do my wrinkles? And she said, oh, mum, just look at Hockney, he just draws his mum's wrinkles in, just draw them in. So I got um, old reading specs, I worked out, it was like a middle distance, and by the afternoon, I'd done a pencil drawing of myself in specs, and it was actually, I mean, it was significantly better. It was so significantly better that I was shocked. I thought, ooh, this is amazing, right, so. And about a week or so, you know, very, just, just before this whole era, period started in my life, I'd read an article, I think it was the, um, the Royal Academy or Associated Board Music magazine thing, you know, how to become a master. You know, German psychologists have worked out that, you know, if you do three hours a day for ten years, you're on to step one on the rung of mastery of your art. So I thought, right, 
three hours a day. I could have done that plenty in my life. So I could like, okay, I'm 58, 59 for long. I'm going to do 10 hours a day for three years because I can do it, because I can do that. I've got those hours. And I made a pact to myself. And for five weeks, I just drew and painted little onions, beautiful colours, Auntie Sue, Susie came down, she sat, I photographed, did stuff, got some, Sarah, what paint, try some gouache, mum, gouache blooming hard actually, but never mind, these things you learn, and you start doing stuff, and I thought, well, get that Indian lamp, it's a beauty, it's really hard, and, and I just thought, I don't know what the hell to do, I'll just, whatever catches my interest, so there's a capsule of six weeks of absolute innocence to any art theory, art history, not to art, because I'd always loved my painters and my paintings and contemporary, abstract, whatever. Not a great fan of video and all that stuff, sorry, Ian. Um, you know, still, it doesn't, it doesn't touch my heart. You know, it's like, it's got to be like music to the eye, to the heart. And um, I went on this like exponential improvement thing. Then I did the show with Kai, and just before it, finished, I rang up Kole Keredigion, and I'd been to one, but it must have been, no, it was before I finished, I had a three, four week lull, and I went to two painting classes up in uh, Art Centre, and I sat next to Jenny Hyde, and by the second one, she went like this with all the bangles on her arm, she said, hey kid, said, kid go over, go to Kole Keredigion, and go and see Be With Liz Hale and Jules and uh, Bridget, because do it now before they all go, because it, they're amazing. And I thought, well, you know, I've got three more shows to do with Kai. Then I'm in the big abyss of my life. What am I going to stay and do Little's Onions? I need to push myself now. So I rang up Jules uh, Ruddock, Julian Ruddock. It's such a love. I said, well, come and see me on November the 1st at 1 o'clock. And I thought, oh, even I could remember that. 1-1. One, one. And it's 11, isn't it? I said, 1-1-11. One, one, I can remember that. That was fantastic. Um, and so I went to see him, showed my portfolio. He said, OK, cool. Uh, you can start tomorrow morning. So I came out of the show on Friday in London, Tuesday morning, life drawing class, naked model, but I had my middle distance specs. I'd worked this one out. And that's how I started. And then after about six weeks, and I was into 10 hours a day, I and mean, I just couldn't stop myself. And they're fantastic. Colica Redigion, I can't extol the virtues enough. I mean, they're just absolute gold mine in my life. And they supported me all the way. And by about October, I thought, ah, oh, I'm going to go and do my degree. How do I pay for that? I don't know. I'll just, let's just do it. I'm going to go. And so, and then in January, and I, so I went and I saw John Harvey, and he said, oh, yeah, well, congratulations, you know, do the same. Then I did my, got my B-Tech with Colin Cridigion, and I did my first in Aberystwyth. But I wanted, I thought, I'm not, I'm an Aber girl, but I've always lived all over the world and stuff and places, and if I'm here a bit too much, it gets me feeling trapped. So I thought, mm. and I'd been to the Cardiff um, Art School degree show, and I was really impressed, um, really, really impressed. And I just loved the building. And when I was, up until I was 15, I was going to go to art school. And my art teacher at the time painted, would paint, literally. I'd bring in my little bits. Every, I painted every day of my life. And my mum would just like throw away drawings and paintings and see it. And four braces for my teeth, dentist gave up. They were all rumpled up in the paper for supper, you know, boom, boom, gone. So uh, I just painted and made and painted and made all my life. And she'd catch me to practice, right? She'd catch me. But I got into the, um, into the National Talk Show of Wales. And Alan Frenchall, my boyfriend, was at the Royal Academy. And when I was about 14, 15, he said, oh, I need to come to London, get to the Academy. She should try for the Academy because you get in, you know, you'll get in, you'll get in. And I didn't know anything about anything. I knew nothing. And one day, it was a very, uh, I would be about, very young 15, you know, like 15 and a quarter or something. Went to the art room, Howell Harris, painted over my this masterpiece of a man's head with a hat. Man with a hat, right? Remember that for all my cowboys. And uh, I got really knocked and I said, very arrogantly, I said, snatch it, don't ever paint my work again. You can discuss it, but you need to paint on it. It's my work. So how did I get to do this exhibition? I was, um, did my first exhibition with Karen Robbie in Modelan. I knew Mary, been to some Mary Lloyd-Jones workshops, she was fabulous. Um, and then, at the end of my second year in Cardiff, had this lovely letter through the post, did I want to do an exhibition here? I couldn't believe it, it was just such a lovely invitation and a real goal. And on my, you know, 10 hours a day for three years, 
I thought, just do it. Just push the boat out, take a solo, see what you can do. And I'll be 62 in September, or they'll have really been 62 since last September, because that's how I function. And uh, yeah, so um, it's been this opportunity and for me to see what was inside. I don't know what's inside. I'd like to be able to paint far more freely and more abstract stuff, but there's a lot to learn yet. And although I might still visualize it, it's very interesting psychologically how you curb yourself. And if there's, if I want to work from the mirror or a photograph of myself or whatever, and you get, and then what happens is the painting dictates you whether you like it or not. But I have to remember when I'm painting every now and then, look, you know, if you don't want to go this way, what have you got to lose? And I can just, I can edit and paint over stuff now. I can lose things. But at the present moment in time, I love to work in old painting because then you get the marks and the bumps and some history or suggestions from the other painting. I love all that. And that stuff is coming into the way that I work for paintings, which I might start literally from scratch on a clean canvas. Um, and I like to, it's a bit like the history and the movement uh, physically. Now, I don't know whether I'm going to carry on with just figurative stuff. In my head, I've got all these other ideas. But there is something magical about the figure, the human figure, the human form. And it gives me, I love clothes, you know, I love, my, that's why I've got my outfit installation. I've always dressed up since I was a kid, you know. And uh, um, all of this is sort of coming into play and it gives you colour and texture. It's like, I don't know. Tell me a little bit more about the outfit. Well, the outfit installation, I was thinking, oh, well, you know, it's nearing November. What else are you going to do to film it? What if you can't paint enough paintings, Annie? Or, you know, whatever. And uh, I was lying in bed, sort of, maybe it might have even been as late as January, thinking, am I going to do... I was home Christmas thinking, God, you've got a lot of gear. You've got a lot of hats. You've got a lot of shoes. You've got these bags. You've got stuff from decades. What are you going to do with them all? Then about three o'clock one morning, it would have been early January, I remember thinking... Ping! I'm going to use my clothes. I'm going to make an installation. I'm going to put them on all my favourite chairs. And they're anthropomorphic. Chairs, they're my friends. I've been collecting chairs. I've got weird little chairs that I love, you know. And um, I have a strained relationship with chairs, actually, because I will stand painting 10 or 12 hours a day. I literally stand all the time. But you walk and you look back to them, so it's not like you're in one place. But I don't often sit. You know, you go to the loo, you eat. Um, car sometimes really otherwise I'm standing or moving so chairs are like some decoration in my life it's like my wardrobe right it's like my wardrobe I've got all these outfits and like dressy up stuff and like oh is that a good bit of stuff and I never go anywhere to wear any of this stuff I've got posh stuff everything I end up in that filthy blooming apron and that yeah I'm thinking oh god you know same old blooming painty gear but it's sort of lovely as well I'm like a little painty monk um so I thought I'd enjoy my outfits and stick them on the chairs I never get to sit in and uh, I've drawn those chairs, you know, and the chairs I never, ever, ever sit in. And in my studio, I've got a lovely stripy chair. And Hidemi would, or does sometimes, he look at me, he sits in the chair. And then I sort of stand and have my think, oh, you're sitting in the chair. I could be like resting in that chair, but I never get to sit in it. So there we are. And that's how my clothes, the installation, my, you know, I've got my Stetson, I've got my cardigan that I've painted. My red coat is in the painting, my cowboy boots. A cowboy shirt, I'm not sure it's here actually, might have forgotten it. Painting gear, what else? Um, I've got hat stuff, but a lot of my gear. I've got my fish shirt, my fish brooch. It's all in my paintings. It's going to be on my chair bodies.